Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. It's finally almost the end of winter. Yeah, I'm actually pumped about it this year. A lot of times I'm just kind of whatever, but seriously, no more cold. For me, as soon as it ticks over into March, I'm basically just right into spring mode. I go like, oh, March, it's, it's like when it starts to get warm again, right? Right? Maybe? And today I'm covering with you guys 10 of the designer fragrances I'm looking forward to wearing the most this coming spring. So let's check these out. Honorable mentions. We got two of them. First up, Versace Dylan Blue. Just a nice, easy to wear blue fragrance. Doesn't cost all that much money compared to the big dogs, the Sauvages, the Wise, the Blue de Chanel's of the world. Great versatility and compliment factor with this fragrance. You've got that citrus, little touch of incense, giving it a little whiff, little hint of smoke. You've got that ambroxan in there, giving it a modern woodsy feel. You can wear this anytime during the spring when it's cool or when it starts to heat up. Versace Dylan Blue is going to work. And then my other honorable mention Mugler Cologne. Yeah, the classic quintessential green soapy fragrance. Mine is a stupid splash bottle. I suggest not getting a splash bottle if at all possible because uh, again, they're stupid. I know some people like them, but man, I despise having to put it in my hands and do this whole thing. Nah. Fragrance though smells amazing. It's so clean, so easy to pull off, and it has a similarity to Creed's original vetiver, only it's way cheaper. All right, official top 10 time. We're starting with Calvin Klein, Eternity for Men. This is the Eau de Parfum. Lavender, sage, apple, and suede, some of the notes in the scent. It does have that original Eternity Eau de Toilette DNA in here. You can smell it as soon as you spray it on. If you're familiar with that scent, you're gonna be like, yep, that's Eternity. Like many flankers that come out nowadays that are you know, doing a tweak or a take on an older fragrance though, you're taking Eternity and basically modernizing it a bit here. Performance is amplified compared to what you're gonna find in the Eternity Eau de Toilette that you can buy nowadays at stores, so that's a nice positive as well. Little bit of sweetness in the opening from the apple, but it's a really nice aromatic fragrance at its heart. Now a sick, cheap fragrance. This one, very inexpensive from discounters. Packaging, kind of bad. The bottle doesn't look very good. It feels maybe a little cheap, but the fragrance is actually very nice. Lacoste Loam Intense. The cap is really turdy and the bottle, not great either. It's got a good amount of sweetness in here from vanilla. You have vetiver in there, which is a note that I adore in springtime. I think vetiver is so versatile, so classy. And then you've got rhubarb, orange, and ginger in the opening. So it gives you this great lift, this great liveliness. Again, a little bit of sweetness and a tart punch from that rhubarb. The Lacoste Loam line of fragrances is great if you're just looking for inexpensive, versatile scents for warm weather. Of the line though, if you're gonna get just one, get this one, it's the best. Number eight is from Barbados. It's a fragrance that didn't get a whole bunch of love. There are some from Barbados that have gotten a ton of love. Artisan Pure, people all about that. People trying to take Artisan Pure on a date. The way some people talk about it, you think they're in love with it on a level that goes beyond just, it smells good. Barbados Vintage, a lot of people love that one too. Myself included, big fan. This one though, uh, didn't seem to catch on with too many people. It's XX Artisan. It's got that basket weave style, which I think looks great on the bottle. You have this, what kind of looks like silver spray paint on everything as well. The scent though is great. It's got vetiver, Sichuan pepper, a bitter orange, and bergamot. So you're not going to get that really sweet citrus here. The bergamot counteracts the bitter orange a little bit, but it's not on the same level as the bitter orange. So instead of this really super fresh, super bright, very sweet citrus, instead it's a bit rindier and yes, more bitter. Sichuan pepper gives it a big blast of spice, and then that vetiver is there from the opening through the dry down. A little bit dry, a little bit dusty, a little bit grassy, very classy. I'm making rhymes here. We move on from Varvados to Bulgari with Bulgari man Wood Neroli. Number seven. Neroli, bergamot, woods, and musk, some of the notes in this scent, and I love the way that the Neroli is presented in this scent. It punches outside of its weight class as far as how the quality of the fragrance comes across as compared to the price that you're going to pay. It's going to remind some people of Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. Only here it has a little more staying power, a little more punch, and it has that woodiness in the base to make it sing a little bit better in spring. Number six is a fragrance that a bunch of people did not like. Didn't like it a bit. 
I actually think it's very good though. And I like the twist that they did with this one. I think that it's a great change of pace for the line. It's the one gray. Tobacco, cardamom, clary, sage, grapefruit, and yes, vetiver. Some of the notes in the scent. It's not as ambery, sweet, or spicy as the one eau de toilette or the one eau de parfum. And that's really what the one is known for. That's the foundation of those scents, that ambery, sweet, sexy, spicy scent profile. They're known as evening fragrances, date night fragrances. They're known for getting people to come close to you and, you know, try to catch a whiff in a, a more personal situation, we'll say. And the one gray is not that. The one gray is basically a great casual or office scent that has just a, a hint, a whiff of that original The One's DNA in there. But at its heart is a, a very pleasant, classy, soft vetiver scent. It has a little bit of an aromatic feel to it. It's got some fresh spice. The tobacco that's in here is not really a pipe tobacco or anything like that. And I think with this one, a lot of people just expected something different, maybe. So when they smelled it, they just automatically went, ah, nope, no thanks. I am glad to see though, that as time has gone on and more people have been able to go out and smell this on their own, more people have come around to like it. Definitely not that massive sex bomb compliment monster that the one Eau de Parfum is, but what this does, it does really well. Number five, Explorer from Mont Blanc. Bergamot, pink pepper, ambroxan, and Aki Gala wood. This has that versatility, just like Versace Dylan Blue. It's that type of fragrance that I'm just gonna grab, spray, and go and not think about. Of course, the similarity to Creed's Aventus, everybody brings it up, including myself. It is basically a designer, fresh take on Creed's Aventus. It's got that great opening with fresh spice and then sweet citrus, and as it dries down, you get the Aki Gala wood, the Ambroxan, giving it that, that clean, woody base. Just so likable, so easy to wear, and at this point, also so cheap which makes it an even better choice and even better reach. At full retail, it's more of an iffy situation. You go, I don't know about that. But then when you go to a discounter and it's like $30 at that point, hey, you're looking pretty good. Number four, a longtime springtime love of mine, Loam Ultime from Yves Saint Laurent. Ginger, grapefruit, rose, and cedar, some of the notes in the scent. The opening of this is fantastic period. The way the ginger, grapefruit, and rose work together is just magical. It smells fantastic. It's very fresh. It's lively. It's sparkling. The rose gives it this nuance, this twist that really brings it into its own. It makes it unique. The mid also smells fantastic. The dry down is good. It's pleasant. It's nice. Not as good as the opening or the mid, but the dry down isn't a complete letdown. It doesn't destroy the fragrance or anything. It's not like it's amazing, amazing, and then total trash. It's just amazing, amazing, pretty good. Absolutely adore this fragrance. You can still find it at discounters though. It's not as cheap as it used to be. Number three, a fragrance a lot of people are gonna think of as a summertime scent, but as it gets on into spring and it starts to heat up, I'm gonna go for this one. Aqua de Jo Profondo Lights. As rosemary, mastic, sea notes, mandarin orange, and cardamom as some of the notes in the fragrance. It isn't massively different from Aqua de Jo Profundo, but for me personally, if I were going to split them up, Profundo, I would rather wear more in summer and then this one in spring, hence its placement in this video. I love the twist that Profundo and Profundo Lights have given to the original Aqua de Jo's DNA, which is a scent that's very near and dear to my heart. It was my first true signature scent that I myself bought and rebought. Dracar Noir is the first one I really rocked heavily, but my mom bought that for me when I was in like third grade. Aqua de Jo, that's the one I kept going back to. So again, for me, it's a special scent. That green twist that Aqua de Jo Profundo Lights has is really appealing to me also because I'm a fan of green fragrances. So it's kind of a, a match made in heaven to an extent. And like basically all Aqua de Jo's massive attention pulling, compliment pulling fragrance. Number two, gentlemen, Eau de Toilette Intense. Blue Iris, Cardamom, Tonka, Cypress, and Cedar. It smells amazing. I'm a big fan of Iris. I've said it a million times and I'll keep saying it as long as they keep smelling this good. Unfortunately, Iris, the way that it's used here, that sort of creamy, sweet Iris, you know, this very, very sexy, almost pillowy Iris note, oftentimes those notes or that style of Iris, I should say, are relegated to fragrances that are usually worn in fall and winter time. 
So we're talking the Valentino Womo Intenses. We're talking the Dior Ohm Intenses, the Gentleman Odo Parfums, stuff like that. This one though, does dial back that heaviness enough that you can pull it off in spring. This one isn't as fresh as Dior Ohm O was, which is unfortunately discontinued. Dior Ohm O, a lot of people thought of as like the springtime Dior Ohm, but you can still pull this off in spring, just like you could with Dior Ohm O. So if you're a fan of Iris and you'd like one that you can pull off in that early part of spring, check this stuff out, it's fantastic. Number one is from Guerlain. A lot of people are gonna say Guerlain is a niche house, but for their more affordable designer type of scents, I always include those in designer lists because it makes more sense. It is Guerlain Ohm Low Boise. Lime, vetiver, woods, and mint. It has kind of a mojito feel to it. So you have this very fresh, brisk open, but also boozy sweetness. And of course, as it dries down with that vetiver and that woodiness that comes out, it's the perfect type of scent to me, where it has that opening that's just so attention grabbing, that has a few different things going on, so it smells interesting at the same time. You know, it's fresh, it's sweet, it's boozy, it's brisk, and then as it dries down, it's classy, it's woodsy. And oftentimes, you can find it at discounters for a pretty good price. Some people will say that they have issues with performance. I myself do not, so that's a big positive as well. It's just such an amazing scent for springtime, and I am definitely gonna be wearing the heck out of this this year. So there you have it, my top 10 for spring, along with a couple honorable mentions. I'll do the niche and indie list here before too long. Like I said, I'm just so glad to get back into some warm weather and hopefully some travel at some point, that would be nice being cooped up and having it just be freezing. It gets old after a while. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Let me know in the comments some of the fragrances that you guys are looking forward to wearing this spring. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.